Uh, David, if it's all right with you, I will pass things over and uh, we can go over this tip of the week, which is really good. Best practices, uh, optimizing images to improve your website speed. Absolutely. You know, images play a huge role, as I'm sure we all know, in uh, the user experience on any website. But some thought does need to go into which images are being utilized on the website, both not only for uh, the visual experience of the member, but also in terms of uh, the image file sizes, dimensions, all that sort of stuff that really affects load times, SEO, as well as a few other things. So we'll dive into this. It's a pretty simple presentation, uh, but definitely a lot of useful tips uh, to kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're building out and updating your website, adding images, all that sort of stuff. So first things first, we know that images are important to any sort of experience, uh, especially high quality ones. Images that uh, relate well, not only to the target audience, but also to the content that's on either the website or the individual web page, those high quality images end up drawing attention. They can elicit some sort of emotion in the uh, visitor. We definitely wanna make sure we're using as high quality images as possible. Um, and background images, for example, probably the most common one that we're all familiar with, at least on BD sites, the main hero image on the homepage, that really creates an atmosphere, sets the stage almost for uh, the experience uh, that the website visitor will have on the website. It gives them a good idea, uh, aside from the supporting text, what the website is about. So uh, we definitely wanna make sure we're using high quality meaningful images on our sites and our pages. However, a lot of sites use images that are just way too large for the purpose that they're being used for. They might be high quality, but there's some things that we can do uh, to really optimize them. Even if an image is super high quality, if the dimensions of it, for example, or even just the file size uh, is too high, that can really affect the page load times, which ultimately leads to a poor user experience. And we can see that you know, ourselves just by visiting the site as we're building it or updating it. But also slow load times actually can affect your SEO. Google and other search engines, uh, they have begun to favor websites that serve content rapidly to the visitor. Websites that load slow and images play a large role in that most of the time, uh, typically end up getting pushed further down uh, in search results. Images, even though it's something we might not think about a whole lot with regards to SEO, it certainly does play a role. And just, just to clarify a few things, high quality images, it, does, it doesn't mean like, uh, 6,000 pixel enormous image, like the, the, the bigger the image size, the higher the quality it is. What we mean are um, attractive images that have sharp photography, that are clean. Um, it's easy to digest what's happening inside the image, uh, whether it's to elicit an emotional reaction or if it's a navigation cue for the website. Uh, so when we say high quality, we don't necessarily mean like the biggest file size. That's actually the opposite. So uh, when we hear high quality, you just want images that are sharp. Uh, the pictures look good and clear, and it's adding to the website experience. Again, either eliciting emotion or helping with the navigation, um, the user with their navigation of the website. And that's a good segue into this slide here. Uh, going along with those high quality images, uh, we don't necessarily want them to be overly large, both in terms of dimension and also file size. Large images tend to lead to large file sizes, which ultimately leads to slower load times. Um, so here we have some recommended dimensions, as well as some target file sizes that you can typically try to shoot for. Again, this isn't kind of a hard and fast rule. These are just uh, some uh, kind of best practices and some general recommendations here. So for images that would take up the entire width of the website, th again, think of the hero image on the homepage of your BD site. Typically, we'll wanna shoot for a width dimension wise of about 2000 pixels and file size, we really don't wanna have it any larger than about 200 kilobytes. For content images, these are images that would, you know, that you would put in like the body of a post or, you know, a supporting image on a web page. 
These ones, again, this will vary depending on the placement of the image, but there's typically no need to have them any wider than 1200 pixels, really even a thousand might be pushing it in many cases. And then when it comes to file size, we really do wanna keep those uh, below 100 kilobytes. Uh, and that's typically not too hard to do. And then uh, another common type of, uh, of image that's placed on websites are square sidebar images. So in your BD site, you can have sidebars on many different pages. Also here on the home page, as Jason is showing, we have some smaller images. So for these more square or just smaller images that take up a, a smaller footprint, again, typically you could work around about 450, 500 pixels, uh, both length and height. Again, depends on the placement. In terms of file size, 50 kilobytes for these uh, is kind of the, the maximum we want to shoot for. Uh, and all of these recommendations are certainly possible. And we'll share some, uh, some tips and, and free online tools. If you know, you're not familiar, you don't know how to edit photos or you don't have any software for it. We'll show you how to do all of that here. And the reason we wanted to show these is normally uh, a lot of us are getting our images from stock photo websites. There's a million of them out there. And usually um, there's a lot of free stock photo websites. Some of them are paid stock photo websites and they actually charge more for larger sized images, the di dimensions. So if you're looking for you know, a, back a hero background image, you don't need the 8,000 pixel one. Um, you, again, you really just need somewhere around the 2,000 plus or minus range for that. So. Um, right there, you can solve a lot of your problems with images if, if you're downloading the right size or the right size range of images uh, from these stock photo websites or anywhere else you're getting your images on uh, the internet. You don't, I know we're all, we all feel like we need that, the largest size that they make available, but again, we don't need that because it's it's just overly large uh, for the web page or even for what the user needs it, needs it for as it's displayed on the actual website. And another perfect segue here, uh, going into some free online tools that we can use to optimize the images that we're using on our websites. The first one here that we've listed is a free tool that you can use to resize your photos or your images. As Jason mentioned, especially if you're getting photos from stock photo sites, typically the dimensions are extremely large, several thousand pixels in either direction, which we typically don't need. So if we can make those images smaller dimension wise, uh, then we certainly want to, and we can use this, uh, this free resize to iloveimage.com. Moving on, we uh, can also utilize an optimization tool. This wouldn't uh, reduce the dimensions of the photo, the length and width pixel wise, but it would reduce the actual file size, how much storage uh, the, uh, the image file itself takes up. And it does that in a few different ways. Uh, one of the ways is by removing some kind of bloat metadata that's associated with each image. And in some cases it can also, you can also choose whether or not you want the quality of the image reduced or not. That would reduce the file size. So there, there's a few different options to go along with it, but certainly an incredibly useful tool. Uh, we use it pretty often ourselves. Uh, the one that we recommend is just imageoptim.com, short for image optimizer. Uh, and then lastly here, convert tool. This is something a lot of us don't really think about and aren't aware of, but there's several different types of files for images. I think we're all pretty familiar with JPEG and PNG file types for images, uh, but there's a new file type called WebP. Uh, this has become much more prevalent. Google was really the one who spearheaded this file type for images specifically, and it dramatically reduces the file size of the images without any loss to the quality. Uh, and you can easily convert any JPEG or PNG file to a WebP file. Again, no loss to quality and a dramatic reduction in file size, sometimes even up to like 75%. Uh, so it's certainly useful. Not only would that save in terms of uh, website storage and bandwidth usage, but because the website, every time a visitor loads a page, because that page is delivering a smaller file size image, that'll speed up the load time for your pages as well. So there's a few different free tools online that you can use to do this. Uh, Convertio is one, Cloud Convert is another.
And you don't need to use all of these and or any of them. If you have one image on a page um, and the page is loading fine on your mobile device and your, and your desktop, then you're all good. But if you're trying to edge your speed scores and things like that, then you'll probably want to take one or all of these into uh, con consideration. And we're going to show you how you can use these tools. And the reason we're sharing these free tools is not everyone has Photoshop on their computer or Adobe Illustrator or any other high level image cropping or optimization tools. So we wanted to make this video and show you guys how to do it with free tools online. So even a novice user can make sure that they're um, their images are not affecting their website speeds and actually helping uh, their website speeds. Also, bonus, let me go to this next slide here. Um, yeah, we have this. I'll, I'll go through this slide here, David. Important to note, um, the BD platform already optimizes image, image dimensions um, that are uploaded by the members. So if your members upload profile photos that are like 8,000 pixels wide, the system already optimizes those dimensions. You don't have to worry about those. Same thing with post images. If they're adding images to a blog article or an event post, the system will automatically reduce the dimensions uh, to an acceptable uh, size for the website. Also, these tips that we're talking about, they're mainly for when you're uploading images directly into your media manager. So you upload an image into your media manager and then you select to use it as like a hero background image or within the web page builder and things like that. And we're going to cover that in just a moment. And then lastly, if you don't want to do any of this, uh, we did another webinar on a shortcut using a free tool called Image Kit. They have a great freemium plan. Um, and this will optimize image delivery uh, and serve all your images in that format that David just mentioned, WebP, um, automatically. Let me share a link to that video from our blog that we did previously. Let me go to the Brilliant Directories website. And I think if I just search for speed in our blog here, you have five ways to rocket boost your website speed. This talks about some of the optimization settings built into the Brilliant Directories platform. Uh, but the last thing here at 19 minutes, you can fast forward, or excuse me, uh, at 10 minutes here, we talk about using Image Kit. Um, it's a third party tool, but it serves your images in WebP format automatically. You guys can check that out. I just put a link in the chat. Um, but yeah, important to note, so the BD platform optimizes images for you. This is only for images you're uploading into the media manager or anywhere else you're using. If you have a WordPress site or using other sites on the internet, there's definitely plugins and things like that. But this is for novice users. If you're just doing things on your own, these are best practices for you guys to follow. And just be aware uh, and conscious of the fact that 8,000 pixel images are not appropriate uh, for websites. Uh, so what we have here now is we're gonna look at a live website example, a before and after of a website, just their homepage with four images on it um, using overly large images. And we're gonna optimize those images and see the difference in the speed scores uh, for the site. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is the example website, our webinar demo site. We have a hero background image here of a nice architectural home. And here in the hero divider, we have three images here, kind of home related. A couple looking for a house, uh, moving into their apartment, and a couple walking by another house. And if we look at the speed score for this site, we did a test earlier. Uh, this site, and it's because of the images, we're gonna fix that. We can see that the performance uh, is 63 and 86 on GT metrics. And uh, we can see here that images are contributing to about seven megabytes of load time. We want a web page to be under a megabyte, under 500 kilobytes uh, total, or, or even smaller if possible. And we can see here just four images are contributing to 35% of the memory or file size of this page. Uh, so let's reload this page real quick. And we can see here I'm reloading and that background image took a, a while to download. We saw a gray space uh, for a minute. Let's take a look at this image for, for a moment. So here's the image on its own. I can, this is how big the image is. We can see here how much uh, this takes. So let's download this image and let's optimizing it using some of those tools that David mentioned. So let's save this image to our computer. It's a JPEG file. And this image is eight megabytes in size. So the first thing we want to do is we want to resize it. It's just too big for the space. So I'll share this link, iloveimage.com forward slash resize. 
And uh, I'm just gonna use all three of these so we all get an idea of how they each work. So there's a link there. So I'm gonna select an image from my computer and let's go here. Here is that eight, see it's 8,683 kilobytes. That's eight megabytes. Let's copy that. And it's gonna ask me, right now the width is 6,700 by 2,100. Way too big. Let's just bring this down to 2,000 and it should auto update. There we go. It just did the height on its own, maintain aspect ratio, and let's click resize image, and it's gonna allow me to download the resized image. Okay, great. So that already brought it down to one megabyte, so from eight to one megabyte. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my second tool here. Again, you don't have to use all of these, but just if you want to. Um, Imageoptin.com forward slash online. The forward slash online is important. It allows you to, uh, do all the optimization online. So what this is gonna do is, if you ever take a picture on your iPhone, you'll notice that that image has metadata attributed to it. It has a date, it has a location, um, and it's got tons of other information associated with that photo. And that information adds to the file, overall file size of the image when you upload it to your website, any website. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna go to image opt-on. I know it's a JPEG. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. And you can choose if you want the quality to be low, medium, or high. Honestly, medium or high works fine. You know, even in this case, let's just keep it as high. Um, so we're gonna click browse. We're gonna choose now that one megabyte house copy image. And once you select it, you're done. It'll automatically process it. And there we go, it's downloading it now. So that went from one megabyte to 207 kilobytes. So that's like an 80% savings right there so we now we have the same image from eight megabytes to 207 kilobytes um, now what we're going to do it's still a jpeg i want to convert it to a web peak format um, and that's going to be like the icing on the cake for all this so um, i've made it 2000 pixels i've removed all the bloat meta whatever this thing does and now i'm going to use i can either use convertio or cloud convert they have some kind of a limit, it's free, um, but again, if you're, you're not gonna do 100 of these a day. So we're gonna choose the file, we're gonna choose our 200 kilobyte Hero House copy, and it's a JPEG and it's gonna say, what do you wanna convert it to? I'm gonna choose WebP, and we're gonna convert that. And they throttle it a little bit, and uh, it's already done. So now we're down to 61 kilobytes, instead of 8,000 kilobytes, which is eight megabytes. I'll go ahead and download this. So we can see here the progression of this. Eight megabytes, changed the, the dimensions to something appropriate, brought it down to one megabyte, uh, removed the blow, brought it down to 207 kilobytes, and down to 61 here. So let's upload this to the design settings, to the media manager, and we're gonna run the speed test score one more time. And this is just the one hero image, which usually the hero background image, there's only one on a page. You're usually using it on some kind of specialized landing page. So you're, again, you're not gonna be doing this a hundred times. You're just using it. You just have to be conscious of it as you're building out some of your web pages. So this is the media manager now. Uh, we're adding the 60 kilobyte image here, and we're gonna select this. The images are the same as far as the way they look. We'll even do a before and after. Okay, great. Let's duplicate this and let's refresh. We can see there was no delay now. I'm, I'm, I'm hard refreshing here. There's barely a delay in getting this image where be before when it was the older image, uh, we were seeing a gray space for a moment and it's even slower on mobile devices. Um, let me just right click here. Yep, we can see here it's loading the WebP image and we can see the dimensions here, 2000 by 656. And this one, the dimensions were 6700 by 2198. And I do see a small difference in image quality, to be honest, but not a tremendous amount. And again, it's, we took it through three different tools. Um, and again, you, you don't have to use all of them. You could just use a few of them if you wanted to, but let's run this speed test again. Now there were still these three images down here that are not optimized, but just from updating the hero image, which was the largest one, let's see how that affects the speed score here. And this is a great website, gtmetrics.com. Uh, there's a lot of speed testing tools out there. Are they all amazing? 
No, they all have their own biases towards what they favor as, as good speed scores and different. Google has their testing tool, but it's a good idea to get just a pulse of an overall pulse if there's any major outliers on the web page or your website that should or could be improved. So we can see here, and I can open the old one in another tab, just from changing that image, um, we're we're back to performance 95. You know, these these are all good scores here, and we can even get higher scores by up updating those other three there. Uh, the fully loaded time went to 1.3 seconds. So image load is now 895 kilobytes compared to when it was. 7.35 megabytes. That's going to be hard on a mobile device to download that, especially if you're not on 5G or connected to Wi-Fi. Um, I don't think I need to go through the, this is already a good score here, through the other images, but that is the basic idea um, for optimizing large images. And again, you only need to do this if you seem, if you don't know if you have a um, high file size. If you're unsure, you can go to your media manager and it should show you the size of the images. Let me see here if we go to list view. Yeah, if you so you can toggle grid view and list view. This is good to know. And it says the size. So we can see here eight megabytes. That would be a red flag as opposed to 62 kilobytes uh, and so on and so forth. So if we're looking at our standards here, if we have it just in the back of our mind of this, this, the file size is the important thing. Dimensions are helpful in achieving a good file size. That's the most important. But you know, for, for background images, hero background images, we want 50 to 200 kilobytes. And we see that here in the, in the background image here. It's 62 kilobytes. Um, and we could yeah. even turn on image kit to uh, further improve the uh, load times. Yeah, so as as we were mentioning, um, you can use ImageKit on a site. I, I did share the link to the blog article, but let me, I have a quick, let me see here, just a moment. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole setup for ImageKit, but when you enable it, let's see how this uh, enhances the image delivery. You would go to your, you would set up an ImageKit account, and then uh, you would just paste the uh, the link for the optimized images here in your advanced settings. All right, and let me just go to the website and make sure that that's enabled. If we go here now, these should be loaded from Image Kit, and they are, and uh, they are, in, see these are really large images. They're 1,000, 1,007 pixels wide. That's not necessary. However, let's run the uh, speed test tool one more time here, and uh, we'll give that a second. And did I share a link to, no, I did not. Let me share a link to convertio.co as well as convertcloud.com. They kind of do the same thing as far as converting your PNG and JPEG images to a WebP format. Okay, great. Let me, I can go back here. So we had a C score before any optimization. Then we had, did I mess this up here? I wanted to go. I think I did mess this up here. I'm trying to find the order of pages that I had. Well, anyways, nonetheless, now we've reached a 100% structure uh, with that most recent, uh, with using Image Kit here. Um, this is good. You know, anything in the high 80s or in the 90s is definitely a good sign that the website is at least doesn't have any major offenders with regard to its speed um, or, or anything that's causing lo page load lag. Uh, on the site. So um, that's basically it. Just to be a little aware of image sizes on your site, it's a good pe best practices, especially I know not all of us are web designers, but we're managing our websites. So it's important to keep that uh, in mind.